Hello and welcome to this video out of my Networking Basics series. I'm Wolfgang Tremmel and I run the DKIX Academy. If you're interested in more content, videos, white papers and other interesting stuff, just head over to the DKIX website, dkix.net slash academy. There is plenty of content for you. But now let's get started talking about networking basics. The networking basics series is all about how the internet works. We talked about Ethernet, we talked about IP routing, UDP and TCP already. And today I'm going to present about the Internet Control Message Protocol ICMP. Remember the internet model, the layered model, the protocol stack of the internet. And on layer three, the so-called IP layer, here data units are called packets. The IP layer provides source to destination transport. And for this, we need IP addresses. Protocols on uh, the internet layer are IP version four and IP version six. Above the internet layer, we have the transport layer. And the transport layer provides sophisticated features like flow control, reliability, or congestion avoidance. And it also may contain information about the next layer up. Example protocols for the transport layer are usually TCP and UDP. And I already made videos about that. Just head to the DKIX website if you haven't seen them. But on this layer, we also have a protocol called ICMP. And ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. Keep in mind that the IP stack is not as strict with layers as the OZ stack. I introduced the OZ stack and the IP stack in the second video out of this series. ICMP also uses IP for transport, but it does not have anything above it. So what's it needed for anyway? To understand about ICMP, let's take a step backward and let's talk about the so-called reasons for packets. So why are IP packets being sent? Well, usually because a user like you clicks on something. So you click on your iPhone, it sends out a packet and requests information. Or a machine reacts to an event like a door is being opened or an alarm is being triggered and a message, a packet is being sent. In general, packets are being sent because some software, some program on the application layer needs to send data. Well, ICMP packets are different. ICMP often are a reaction to a network event, like an error message or an exception. And they are not sent because a human being clicks on a link, but they may be sent by a network device like a router to indicate an exceptional state or an error in transmission. In this case, a packet was dropped or a packet was discarded and the router sends back an ICMP message to indicate that error. Let me give you an example. Remember the IP header. In the IP version 6 header, we have a field called hop limit. And well, in V4, it's also there. It's called time to live and serves the same function. When the packet is created, originated, the hop limit is initialized to a value between 1 and 255. Quite often, 64 is used. And the hop limit is decreased every time a router 
forwards this packet. And once the hop limit hits zero, the packet is being discarded. If you have a look here at our network map, we originate the packet with a hop limit of 64, the next router decreases it to 63, to 62, and at a certain point it's decreased to 1. If this router forwards it and the next router decreases it to 0, it has to discard the packet. But it not just discards the packet, it also generates an error message, an ICMP error packet, which is sent back to the originator. The ICMP packet as a source address, it gets the IP address of the router discarding the packet. And as a destination address, it gets the original address of the originator of the discarded packet. Also, the ICMP code of time exceeded is set. The next field is a code field, it's set to zero. And the IP header and the first eight bytes of the discarded packet are added. Then the ICMP packet is sent back to the original originator of the discarded packet. So to summarize, when the time to live hop, or hop count hits zero, the router discards the packet. And the router also sends an ICMP packet of type, type time exceeded back to the originator. And this packet contains just enough information so the originator knows which packet was discarded. There are more ICMP types, like for example, destination unreachable. Did you ever get a destination unreachable error message in your browser or in your application? Well, this is also an ICMP message. The ICMP type in this case is one and the code field gives some additional reason why the packet was discarded. Unlike the time exceeded, the destination origin unreachable is usually created by the target system uh, or by a firewall to indicate that the packet could not be delivered. Another ICMP type is the so-called echo request and echo reply. Do you know the command line tool named ping? Well, this is one of the few user originated ICMP packets. Ping sends out an echo request ICMP packet, which is then answered by another ICMP packet called echo reply. Well, here we have a little bit of difference between IP version 4 and IP version 6 because the ICMP type field is numbered differently. In ICMP4, the type values were, well, where they were assigned as people had new ideas what ICMP could be used for. So they started at a low number and counted upwards. So for example, zero is echo reply and 43 is a type called extended echo reply. In IP version six, well, they already knew which types were needed. So they put a little bit more structure into it. Error messages have an ICMP type of between zero and 127 and informational message, messages like echo reply and echo request have uh, numbers between 128 and 255. So that's it about ICMP. To summarize, ICMP is the Internet Control Message Protocol. It plays an important role for signaling, signaling error messages, exceptional states, or information. And devices send ICMP messages to indicate error states or other information. And these ICMP messages are often not user initiated, but triggered by packet forwarding or delivery events. 
ISMP exists both in IPv4 and IPv6, but the values differ. If you're interested in more, just download the PDF of this presentation. At the end, you will find additional links, like for example, the list of all possible ICMP values. And with that, thank you very much for listening. I'm Wolfgang Tremmel from the DKIX Academy. Thank you and bye-bye.